Okay, how to pressure check, pressure test, all of your PEX plumbing before you cover it with drywall and come and cut off your stub out, which is solid until you come in and cut that off to put the uh, isolation valve on for equipment and find out there's a water leak somewhere, which you don't want to have happen. So, this is our manifold, our hot manifold, our cold manifold, um, all of these routes, the supply in here and here, except for the supply to the washing machine elsewhere, but every other piece of equipment supply comes into the manifold and then leaves from here. And we have isolation valves that will close. And I don't want to be too specific or go into too much detail, but your val valves are always closed when the handle is perpendicular to the route of the valve, the axial route or the, the route that the fluid takes, and they're open when they're parallel to the to the uh, route itself. So we've got everything closed here. Um, and then we've got charge air marked for, for cold water, just loops around. And this is the connection to charge it with air here. And we've got charge air on the hot, and that goes around and comes in here. And that's because this is all that you'll be able to see when this is finished with drywall and you come to shut down seasonally, but uh, which will be how you, you charge the system out by just um, rushing air into it and leaving the equipment open and pushing the water out of it um, so that it doesn't freeze. But we're going to test. And um, the, in that, for testing purposes, we're not going to leave anything open. We've got things closed. Like I said, the stub outs are solid, uh, closed. We've got uh, that little route there goes out to the petcock or the spigot. That's been closed. And um, there's one other thing. Oh, the refrigerator water supply is in a little fixture box here. And that little valve is shut on him and the laundry Valves are shut, they're similar style, but they're closed as well. So what have we done for this? This is a half inch PEX to half inch NPT female. And then we've got a bushing that's NPT, half inch NPT to quarter inch NPT. And then we have um, a little valve stem, like Schrader valve, like you have on your tire, two quarter inch NPT threaded into that. So you got one, two, three fittings, it was the cleanest job of this that I could do. I did have to special order these little Schrader valves. Um, but what that is makes, gives us, affords us, is the use of one of these high quality tire filling uh, devices. They have a uh, little lock on, so you don't have to sit there. A lot of tire filling hoses, uh, when you pr push in, it depresses the, the Schrader valve and you get a tss, tss, tss filling action. But this style will be what I purchased. This belongs to me, but I'll purchase and leave one down here for seasonally shutting down. Um, it allows you to get on there and, and lock on there. Now we've been connected there. So I can sort of leave my post in that way and I can operate it down here. Um, you can have you know, a length of hose on this device. I didn't bring that with me today, so we've just got it stuck right to the compressor. And so what you get here is the ability to fill with this lever to bleed air out with that button and whenever you stop filling this little meter here will give you the pressure that you've that you've got in the system just like it gives you the pressure in your tire which is what I wanted I, I didn't want to have to feed air by pressing up there and then take that away and put a gauge on and then put more air and then put a gauge on I wanted uh, the smoothest kind of workflow to this process because it's still kind of involved so right now we have the ability to flood air from this tank into the charge air for cold and it'll just go to here and it'll stop so the only volume that we're filling is this little piece around to that valve so you'll see it won't take much to give us we're going to go for 50 psi which is round about what your your uh, water supply in most cases is at but just with a little shot of that this comes roaring right out of here i'm going to use the light on my hat um we'll modify that but so we want to make sure that we're in psi focus you fuck um, which, you know, in red, there's another, I think that's bar, uh, something else. Um, either way, you want to make sure that your units are PSI. And right now we've, we're at 75 because we only had to, a little bit of volume here. So you'll notice when I open this valve, you hear that little hiss. Now that we've dropped right out again because we've gained all this extra volume of all these routes. Anyway. So what we're going to do to pressure test, we could do a variety of different um, sequences of events. Um, 
this is these are all labeled what we're going to do is open all these toilet bathroom sink shower kitchen and fridge now everybody's open the full system and we're going to charge it with 50 psi so we'll just give it that's the compressor kicking on so that's 40 or so i'm sorry you can't see that there we go Fifty. It looks pretty good, and I have a nice quiet compressor. Um, but we also want to listen around, so the, all of the fittings are concentrated to this location. And then there's one fitting where it goes from PEX, you know, band clamp from PEX to any of these copper stubs. <clears throat> and then I want to. I had one pair of elbows up there to do this corner because of plumbing those around. But when that shuts up. <clears throat> what you can do is the most effective thing to do is to leave this set for a period of time overnight um, Or even for a few hours and see if you lose pressure very slowly um, you can also use something like Windex and Spray your fittings. I wish that compressor would shut up um, But you can give everybody a mist. You know, you can soak everybody down with Your bottles open and see if you get any bubbles. Soapy water works the same. I didn't bring a spray bottle to mix soapy water today. So if you just give everybody, you know, a film, a little buildup, and you don't see, this doesn't leave any gross residue using Windex or even just dish soap, but I don't see any issues there, which is real nice. Um, I don't hear anything around here. And we'll do the same for the hot water. Uh, but what you'll do in the future when you come to close down for the season, this equipment will not be sealed. Um, you'll open the valves and you'll open the faucet. And most of the water, the way that we've plumbed this, will run down to this point. It'll just be, it'll have water standing in it up to the sink. But then you'll just open that um, channel, this kitchen sink, and a bunch of bubbles and, and water stuff will shoot out of there until it's clear then you close that valve and you move on to the next piece of equipment and so on down the line until you've cleared all the equipment and things like the uh well actually this is how we'll bleed the water out just as an example things like the refrigerator most of the water it comes all the way downhill to here but anything that's left you can just crack them out and it'll piddle water out into our hot water tank uh pan which has got a hard um shower drain style out onto the into the main gray water line so the place is a little cramped but um we've got seasonal um pressurizing and plumbing tests that we've been able to do here on account of the way that this was set up and uh i like the the little tire connection which gives you the automatic because you don't want to put 100 or 150 psi in the system it would never take that in with water and um you can have catastrophic failure when you get up to that level but 50 psi is a lot like a truck tire and you know you hear people people talking about slashing tires and uh, you can do that with a pocket knife because they don't go pop. They, don't, they don't explosively decompress they just go like that <sighs> you know it, it's not like some of those videos you see when they overfill a truck tire at a at a semi truck garage and it explodes and hits the ceiling that's that's you know getting into over 100 psi so it's relatively safe to do and um if you take precautions you know i'm wearing glasses and a hat for no reason really i'm fairly confident in my work here but um that would be how i recommend it i did have uh air tool connections on here before all the way up till today actually but I determined that being able to use a nice filler like this, there are some that have a pistol grip and a, a dial as well, which is a little bit finer in some ways in terms of uh, accuracy, But because uh, you can note the needle position and come back in a few hours and see if it's dropped. But that's what I will be doing here, but I wanted to breeze through most of this to give people a sense of what I've done here and how to do it yourself. Mostly it's this, you know, how to get to this point and how much PSI to put in and how to leave it and maybe use some soapy water to see if you have a little slow leak. There you go. We'll see you.